Did an advanced civilization live on Earth many thousands of years ago, only to perish and leave us a secret legacy? Recent discoveries in Egypt's desert sands suggest just that. Researcher Graham Hancock has spent decades searching for the civilization, which probably once inhabited the entire globe and may have come to Earth from outer space. If we believe his explanations, we are being kept in the dark and could benefit enormously from the knowledge of this civilization today. Here is the evidence. For centuries, historians have dated the pyramids to around 2500 BC, a date apparently arbitrarily chosen by scientists simply because the Great Pyramid contains graffiti-like writing from that era. However, these assumptions are now being put to the test more than ever. On closer inspection, the pyramids of Egypt do not fit in with the rest of the country's culture or the era. Today, these buildings are probably among the most researched on Earth. Dozens of aerial surveys and observations have revealed even more curious aspects, such as the astonishing correspondence between the three great pyramids and the positions of the main stars of the Orion Belt. These buildings seem even more puzzling when we realize that they are bare and barren on the inside. Apart from the graffiti from the time of King Cheops, there is not a single hieroglyph, no picture, and no jewelry. Not even a mummy was found in the buildings, and yet researchers want us to believe that these structures were burial chambers for Egyptian kings. In the meantime, there are numerous serious indications that these buildings actually had a completely different function, and they very probably do not originate from the ancient Egyptian culture, but are much older possibly 10,000 years or even 100,000 years. Graham Hancock was in contact with many archaeologists' finds on Earth for a long time as a science journalist. One thing struck the Britain time and time again. Buildings whose age cannot be clearly determined and whose purpose is unclear can be found all over the world. This is no coincidence. Consider for a moment the circumstances at the time of 2500 BC. At that time, the Egyptians only possessed bronze tools. Iron had not yet been invented, and bronze is very soft. If we look at the vast quantities of perfectly and smoothly worked stones from which the pyramids were built, it is impossible that simple workers with soft bronze hammers or chisels could have done this. Strangely, none of the other pyramids in Egypt exhibit such perfect construction and unusual geometry as the three great pyramids of Giza. Step pyramids and smaller structures, some of which were also used to decorate tombs, were very probably just simple replicas of the momental structures at Giza. And there is another thing that stands out about the Great Pyramids. They are not just buildings. Rather, these structures appear to be perfect mathematical and geometric systems. The Pyramid of Khufu is therefore a fascinating combination of architecture, mathematics, and possibly the spiritual beliefs of the culture that built them. If we look at the dimensions and proportions, we find number systems of sacred geometry everywhere. The king's chamber has a width of 10 royal cubits ke, and a length of 20 ke, resulting in an area of 200 ke squared. The ceiling height was estimated at 11.1 ke, resulting in a volume of 2220 cubic cells. Everywhere we encounter the repetition of certain numbers, such as the 20 stones of the floor, which lead to a sequence of 2, 20, 200, and 2,220. A geometric formula that we now know as the Pythagorean Theorem was built into the walls of the king's chamber. The west and east walls each have 18 stones, the north wall 27, and the south wall 37 stones. This leads to the formula 6 squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared, which indicates that the master builders were familiar with this mathematical principle long before Pythagoras. The number sequence 666 can be found again and again, and the sum of the edge lengths of the basin in the middle of the king's chamber also leads to recurring number patterns. The Egyptians were certainly an unusual people, but nowhere where these people left records are there any indications that these people had anywhere near the mathematical knowledge to construct such a complex web of mathematics and geometry in the form of a building. Did Prophets See UFOs? Graham Hancock pursued these facts for decades. He went from being a journalist to an archaeologist himself. 
Hancock researched the world's most mysterious buildings, investigated ancient cultures, and read writings. The researcher came to the conclusion that the ancient Egyptian culture emerged from a much older civilization and that there are also fascinating similarities in several very old advanced civilizations which indicate that this civilization was networked and active all over the world. Hancock and some of his colleagues believe that this mysterious civilization may have originated in the cosmos. This theory has millions of followers worldwide and is known as pre-astronautics. The theories speculate about several extraterrestrial influences on Earth and possible mixtures of primeval human species with humanoids from outer space. Hancock even claims to have found evidence for this in religious texts and myths. In Egypt itself, representations can be found everywhere in art and architecture that can be seen as evidence of extraterrestrial influences. It is possible that the entire complex Egyptian heaven of gods only came about because extraterrestrials, who had come from the sky, guided the Egyptians for a time and shaped their society. Supporters of the pre-astronautic theory see further exciting and convincing parallels in various religions of this world. They argue that similar stories of celestial beings descending from the heavens can be found in many cultures, from the biblical angels to the Vedic gods of India. In Christian mysticism, the fantastic story of the prophet Ezekiel is often associated with pre-astronautics. The book of Ezekiel tells of an encounter between the prophet and a fiery celestial chariot whose wheels moved in all directions simultaneously and which was steered by four human-like beings. Ezekiel 1, 4 through 28 speaks of bizarre things such as wheels within wheels, a great cloud of flaming fire, and something that looked like shining metal. Here we can only marvel, especially when these biblical passages, which some find difficult to understand, are considered in the context of pre-astronautics. Interestingly, not so long ago, the American fighter pilot David Fravor observed a UFO which he said moved in all directions at the same time in a strange way. So we cannot rule out the possibility that entities that appeared to people 2,000 or 3,000 years ago are still moving around the Earth today. However, as a rule, they no longer reveal themselves and we would probably no longer see any gods in them today if they were to descend on Earth. Even the Sphinx was not built by the Egyptians. The Great Sphinx of Giza was long mentioned in the same breath as the pyramids, and it was naturally thought that the buildings somehow belonged together. However, it is now known that the Sphinx is possibly even older than the pyramids and does not really fit into the picture of the previous scribes. A key role in the current debate about the true origins of the Sphinx is played by the traces of water erosion that can be found on the side of the main structure and on its surrounding limestone base. These erosion patterns, Hancock argues in one of his widely read books, could indicate that the Sphinx is 10,000 years old or more. Stylistically and architecturally, the Sphinx does not fit the era in which it was supposedly built. The water erosion theory was not put forward by any power researcher or ufologist. This particular fact caught the eye of an ordinary geologist named Dr. Robert M. Scotch. He had his theories tested by many experts and showed pictures of the erosion marks to colleagues who did not know that the photos were part of the Sphinx in Egypt. They all quickly confirmed his suspicion that powerful waterfalls were at work here. But torrential rainfall over centuries in the Egyptian desert? It sounds unbelievable but it is quite possible. But then the Sphinx is not 4,000 or 5,000 years old, but at least 10,000 years old. Climate models have shown that Egypt was even more humid at that time and that the region experienced heavy rainfall. At that time, Egyptian civilization did not yet exist and we have to ask ourselves, who built this lion-like and mysterious monument? It is possible that the Sphinx is the key to the mysterious culture that researchers such as Graham Hancock and others have pointed out to us. About 100 years ago, the famous American medium Edgar Cayce predicted that a hall of records would be found under a par of the Sphinx, providing mankind with answers as to who it really is and where it came from. There are supposedly numerous cavities in the Sphinx, but all entrances were walled up by the Egyptian Antiquities Authority for inexplicable reasons. It was the Antleans. 
After a lifetime of research, Graham Hancock is almost certain that this advanced civilization, which shaped many other successor cultures, were the Antilleans. This legendary people once inhabited an island in the Atlantic Ocean, which then disappeared for reasons that remain unexplained. The legend of Atlantis was spread by the Greek philosopher Plato in the 4th century BC. He portrayed Atlantis as an advanced civilization, which then perished due to its moral decline. Surviving Antilleans are said to have subsequently spread all over the coast and influenced other cultures. Traces of the Antilleans and a massive flood which could have accompanied the sinking of the continent can be found in the Mediterranean region in Africa, in Europe, and in South America. As evidence, Hancock cites the global parallels in the mythologies of various peoples. All of these people know the story of a last superpeople, and as already mentioned, it is assumed that the Antilleans had an influence in the whole Earth in their heyday. They, and possibly other civilizations, are said to have built a network of pyramids on Earth that served to focus and direct energies on the planet, as well as to maintain contact with their home in the cosmos. All these people and stories tell of the sky disks, sky people, and that these beings acted like gods on Earth. Is sound the key to the universe? Of course, researchers such as Graham Hancock have also tried to decipher how these beings manage to erect buildings such as the pyramids and how they manage to network the entire globe. In the process, the researcher discovered a fascinating construction and engineering technique based on sound. Hancock claims to have found evidence that techniques involving vibration manipulation are suitable for making heavy stones very light and aligning them as precisely as is the case in Giza, for example. Thanks to particle and quantum physics, we now know that all matter basically consists of minimal and constantly vibrating solid components. There is a lot of nothing in between them. The impression of solidity, hardness or weight is only created by the rate of vibration. Vibration is sound, and vice versa. There are said to be Buddhist monks in the Himalayas who can only lift stones by singing. These people have usually spent years changing their brains through meditation, and they know the secrets of this technique. But if this is still possible today, we cannot rule out the possibility that there was once a people on Earth for whom this technique and this view of the world was completely normal. Archaeological finds have always amazed and inspired mankind. They are so diverse and mysterious that they always manage to make us go crazy. But what is it that makes us so excited? It is the unknown, the uncertain, that stimulates our imagination and creativity. The stories behind the finds are often inexplicable and have a depth that we cannot even guess at. However, many finds have become public knowledge and their origins have been explained and a connection made. Some are vaguely attempted to be discussed, but will likely never be revealed. However, all finds have one thing in common. They are fascinating and even urge us to want to find out more about the story behind them. Secret Tunnels and Sunken Boats Blenheim Palace is one of the most beautiful castles in England. It was once built for John Churchill in 1704, after the Battle of the Danube. Winston Churchill was born here in 1874. He is probably John's best-known descendant. At first, this circumstance does not suggest anything unusual. After a huge amount of water was pumped out of the castle, incredible discoveries were made. Large tunnels with graffiti, sunken boats, and much more. The boats could be dated back to 1950, and the graffiti even to 1756. Unbelievable, isn't it? These things were all uncovered after more than 250 years. Dark rooms without windows were even found. In these, there was evidence that people had lived there. There was even evidence of kitchen utensils. The why is not clear. In any case, this fact is quite creepy, because who knows what might have happened in these chambers. Likewise, there are other undiscovered rooms that are still full of water, so it remains to be seen what else Blenheim Palace holds and hides from the world. Ancient Meteorite Crater Gold miners in Australia are common and nothing special. However, some of them have made a fabulous discovery, namely a huge meteorite crater. Now you're thinking, sure, that must be the Wolf Creek Crater. Well, no, because this newly discovered crater is many times bigger. The crater was discovered near one of the most famous gold mining towns, Orobanda. Investigations have shown that the diameter of the impact is about 5 kilometers. 
According to the well-known geologist Jason Myers, the extraterrestrial object responsible for this hole must have been at least 100 meters in size. That is, for comparison, about as long as a football field. Some so-called ray cones were found in the vicinity, which are the clearest indication of the meteorite-like impact. These cones are fragments that do not occur on Earth. It's assumed that the impact must be about 100,000 years old. 200 Skeletons The headline alone suggests something macabre, especially when the skeletons in question were discovered under a French supermarket. They were found because the supermarket was being renovated and refurbished. The owner of the shop said the market was built on part of the cemetery of an old hospital. The gruesome finds was investigated. It was found that all remains of the people found must have died at about the same time, also because of the degree of decomposition. All bodies were buried in a neat arrangement and separated into women, men and children. The mass grave is likely due to a pandemic in the 17th century. Ancient Roman Mosaic Floor in Verona, Italy, an amazingly well-preserved mosaic floor was discovered underground. In 1922, a villa from the Roman period was found there. This was explored and investigated, but after a while it was literally left lying around. Time passed, and the geologists returned and were blown away by what they found. A few meters below the vineyard north of Verona, the almost perfectly preserved soil was brought to light. It's believed that the soil dates back to around the 3rd century AD, an insanely long time, considering how well preserved the mosaic is. Such a find was searched for a long time in vain, and now it has finally been discovered. Here, once again, it's proven how the ancient Romans shaped the historical development of mankind. Amazing and incredible at the same time, what a discovery! The Discovery of Richard III in 2012, Richard III was found under a car park. DNA tests have unequivocally confirmed that it must be Richard who fell at the Battle of Bosworth in 1485. In 2013, the University of Leicester finally proved the unbelievable. The skeleton was immediately transported to Leicester Cathedral, where it was honorably placed. The descendants of Richard III wanted to transfer the remains to York for the sake of justice. After much back and forth, petitions and court decisions from the highest authorities, the remains remained in Leicester and were laid out there. 500 years after his death, Richard III has finally found his resting place. What are the chances of making such a find under a car park? Fossils from the Ice Age Finding fossils also means discovering ever new dimensions of size and perhaps never knowingly existing creatures. One of the largest mammals that ever lived on our planet is the mammoth. Hardly any usable remains of the animal have been found so far, but in Los Angeles, a sensational find was in the offing, because two complete skeletons of mammoths were found here. The tusks alone had an incredible length of about one meter. The animals died out about 10,000 years ago. How fascinating that the remains were discovered, considering this time span. Especially nowadays, when genetic engineering and cloning are far advanced in science, such excavations are of elementary importance. Who knows, maybe one day prehistoric elephants will walk our planet again. Accidental Sensational Discoveries The best things happen spontaneously, so they say. So it is, apparently, with archaeological finds, for groundbreaking discoveries exist that were never actually intended. Roman railway workers have discovered a so-called aqueduct, which is a water pipe of the kind built by the ancient Romans. It was discovered at the end of 2016 and dates back to 312 BC. It was also important to find out exactly how advanced the Romans already were at the time. It's also provided circumstantial evidence of exactly how the Romans lived and supplied themselves water. To date, this uncovering is the oldest aqueduct that has been excavated. Now, part of this find can be admired in an Italian museum. The Lost Egyptian Temple Egyptian culture, with its sphinxes and pyramids, has always attracted the interest of mankind. Myths and legends entwine around the stories behind them. A temple was built for King Ptolemy IV almost 2200 years ago, which has now been found. The temple was found in Komshakao, Hieroglyphs, sarcophagi, inscriptions, and much more were discovered in the construction. The pharaoh is said to have ruled Egypt from 221 to 204 BC. 
He was the fourth pharaoh of his dynasty. A total of eight mummies of the family were found in the object. Finds and parts of the temple can soon be examined and admired in a museum, the largest museum in the world. Creepy and mysterious Egyptian culture, but it does attract interested people around the globe. Soon, new discoveries of the captivating history can be revered again. Roswell Incident Aliens is the key word here. Even today, reports of alleged sightings are revealed daily. Hundreds of sightings pelt the authorities every day. One of the most famous incidents to this day is the one in Roswell. In 1947, an unidentified flying object crashed in Roswell in July. The United States Army reported a flying saucer. This caused a sensation and furor. Even today, people talk about the Roswell legend. As the event attracted mass media interest and onlookers, an exclusion zone was set up around the site and the previous statement was revoked. Suddenly, there was talk of a Russian weather balloon that was supposed to have crashed there. Kind of puzzling, isn't it? Later, the US Air Force revealed that it must indeed have been parts and sensors of a weather balloon. UFO and alien theories were dismissed as baseless and fabricated, but myths still surround the legendary event and speculation continues. Who knows, maybe it wasn't a weather balloon that came down near Roswell. Will we ever know with 100% probability? The Salt in the Soup Such discoveries, finds and myths as they have just been called are the stories that make life interesting. Legends and sagas stimulate our thinking and bring us joy. What would everyday life be without these exciting, controversial and interesting stories? Right, dull and boring. So let's be honest, we are grateful for every story, for all such finds and myths, because we all love to rack our brains and puzzle over what's behind them. They are the salt in our soup. We all somehow try to explain these things in a more or less plausible way. It's precisely the discussions and opposing views that bring the fire into the story and make us perk up. Therefore, we are happy about all new discoveries and look forward to getting our grey cells moving again soon, thinking, reflecting, and theorizing. The world around us is filled with inexplicable things that have held a fascination for us since the dawn of mankind. The following video introduces you to some mysteries that make science despair. Skull of a Werewolf When Bulgarian-born Trik Dragunov was plowing a field in the village of Novoselo in the Republic of Macedonia, he found a buried box locked with chains. When he opened it, he could not believe his eyes. According to Dragunov, the mummified skull inside belonged to a werewolf. The historian Philip Garnev heard about the find and met with the farmer, who presented him with his find. Garnev describes the unusually shaped skull as that of a wolf, with the difference of an enlarged brain case. This feature is found mainly in primates. The historian photographed the skull and submitted the images to government biologists for analysis. They concluded that it was the skull of a wolf that suffered from Paget's disease. In this disease, the bones of the skull enlarged and appear more human. Werewolves have been mentioned in Balkan folklore for thousands of years, and there are many legends about the origin of werewolves. In some regions of the Balkans, people believe that the ability to turn into a wolf is innate. In other regions, people believe that those who have committed a mortal sin are reborn as werewolves. In all regions, people believed to be a werewolf were threatened with exorcism, decapitation, and burning of the body. The Despilio Tablet The consensus among archaeologists is that writing was invented in Sumeria between 4,000 and 3,000 years before Christ. The discovery of the Despilio tablet in 1993 in a Neolithic settlement in northern Greece near the town of Castoria challenges this theory. The settlement was inhabited between 8,000 and 7,000 years ago, and the tablet with unknown writing found there is considered by scientists to be more than 5,000 years old. The wooden tablet was examined using the C12 method and dated to 5260 BC. The Despilio tablet is thus more than 1,000 years older than all previously known Sumerian writings. In 2004, the find was made public, and at the same time, it was announced that the text could not simply be deciphered without considering the historical context. Ancient civilizations in the Middle East used ideograms, while ancient Greece used syllables to express themselves. The tablet is partially damaged, making it even more difficult to decipher the writing. It's currently undergoing restoration. Chakreshwar Temple 
North of Mumbai lie the remains of Nala Sopara, which was an ancient Buddhist center in the region 2,300 years ago. It grew up around the port of Sopara, and the Trakreshwar Temple was among the structures. In its heyday, Nala Sopara was a city with fortifications, houses, marketplaces, palaces, and a monastery. It was enclosed by a moat and could be entered through 17 gates. The Trakreshwar Temple was a temple of the god Shiva about 1,000 years old. The original temple was destroyed long ago and replaced by modern structures. Currently, ornate tiles adorn the walls and floors inside. There are many other sculptures and images of the gods on the grounds, and legend has it that Buddha personally visited Nala Sopara. Mirrors from the Iron Age In 2007, an Iron Age mirror was found in the town of Didcot, south of Oxford. During an investigation of the soil, the metal detector struck and brought the rare find to light. The ornately crafted mirror is typical for England and is dated to the late Iron Age. A total of 58 of these mirrors exist and only 18 of them are completely preserved. The specimen found in the town of Didcot dates back to the 1st century BC and impresses with its unusually beautiful pattern on the back, which was made by a true master of his trade. Mirrors were real prestige objects in the Iron Age, which only a few people had in their possession. It's unclear what functions they performed in the Iron Age. In some cultures, mirrors are seen as a magical object that provides a different perspective on the surroundings or serves as a portal to another world. Experts assume that mirrors were mainly used by shamans and fortune tellers in the Iron Age. It's excluded that this mirror served as a burial object, as it was not found near burial sites. During investigations, experts noticed the striking similarity to the Pegston mirror found between the villages of Pegston and Shillington in Bedfordshire. The site was the grave of an Iron Age woman, 40 kilometers from the site at Didcot. Experts agree that the two mirrors were made at the same site. A metallurgical examination corroborated this assumption and confirms that the same bronze was used in the same manufacture of both mirrors. Pueblo Bonito Pueblo Bonito was discovered in 1849 during a military campaign in the U.S. state of New Mexico. The Pueblo Indians built the inhabited Pueblo Bonito, which translates as beautiful city, from 823 to 1126 AD. Archaeologists see the monumental structure as an important center in the region for the surrounding communities and see evidence in the ruins of trade in cacao and ceramics between the local Indians and people from Central America. In addition to its function as a trading center, Pueblo Bonito was also used for administration, communication, and as a burial site. Only a small part of the large structure served as a living area. Five stories tower from the valley floor on an area of three acres, with more than 600 rooms. Around the semicircular structure of the building are two plazas and avenues that connect the buildings. Pueblo Bonito is divided into two areas by a precisely aligned wall that runs from north to south through the main square. Small kivas for Indian ceremonies are located in all parts of the city. In its heyday, Pueblo Bonito may have had several thousand inhabitants. Experts suspect that the people left the place between 1100 and 1200 AD because of a drought. Ishengo Bone the Ishengo bone is the curved bone of a baboon 10 cm long. It was found in 1950 by the Belgian geologist Jean de Heinzelen de Braucourt in the former Belgian Congo and today's Democratic Republic of Congo on the northern shore of Lake Edward. On the bone, there are notches arranged in three columns to form several groups and a quartz at its narrower end. It's not clear what purpose the Ishengo bone served. One theory sees in the bone a calculating rod and another speaks of a calendar function. At present, the object, which is estimated to be 20,000 years old, is in the Museum of Natural Sciences in Brussels. Mysterious Winged Structure Archaeologists unearthed a winged structure in the east of England near the ancient city of Wenta Iconorum. The find is attributed to the Roman period and is thought to have been built about 1800 years ago. Experts stated that the wing shape of the structure is unique among all buildings of the Roman Empire. The structure seems to be part of a building complex, as aerial photographs prove. There are other structures to the north of the complex, as well as to the northeast and northwest. The foundation of the wings consists of a thin layer of clay and lime. This suggests that the structure had wooden walls that were plastered with clay. 
only the central room was built of stone. Researchers suspect that the structure was not intended to be used for many years due to its construction. Denisova people While most people are familiar with the term Neanderthal, Denisova man is unknown to them. Both belong to the genus Homo and are close to the modern humans called Homo sapiens. The first evidence for the existence of Denisova man was found in a cave in Siberia in 2010. Scientists assume that our ancestors spread from Siberia to Southeast Asia during the last Ice Age. Modern humans share a common ancestor with Neanderthal and Denisova humans called Homo heidelbergensis, which originated in Africa. Between 300,000 and 400,000 years ago, a group of Homo heidelbergensis left their native Africa and moved north. Once in Eurasia, the group split up. Some moved west and evolved into Neanderthals, and the people who moved east formed the foundation for the evolution of Denisova humans. Giants in Death Valley In 1947, the discovery of a group of amateur archaeologists went through the press. The focus was the discovery of human remains with a body height of 2.7 meters. The spokesman for the expedition said that the discovery in the caves of California's Death Valley could be the inhabitants of the lost continent of Atlantis. The 32 caves, spread over an area of 180 square miles, contained the mummified remains of humans, dinosaurs, and tigers. The authenticity of the find is doubted by archaeologists, as there are several million years between the existence of dinosaurs and tigers on Earth. Mythological Weapons could the Vajra found in the valley of Kathmandu in Nepal be a mysterious weapon that can shoot lightning? Some theories suggest that it's of incredible destructive power and is responsible for the collapse of many technologically advanced civilizations in the past. This mythological weapon is said to have been used not only for destruction but is also a symbol of fertility. For example, it's said to be used to summon rain and thus secure the harvest. If you look closely at some Buddha statues, you can recognize the Vajra in his hand. Vajra comes from the Sanskrit language and cannot be translated unambiguously because of its numerous meanings. Vajra stands for an indestructible substance, usually symbolized by a diamond. Medieval festivals are a great thing. Beautiful people in handsome costumes, fragrant and friendly, show how men and women lived in the Middle Ages. There are entertaining performances delicacies from the grill, music, and all this preferably takes place on a mild summer weekend. Oh, how beautiful it must have been in the Middle Ages, many a visitor thinks and dreams of a nostalgic life in a castle or a palace. Bet that these reveries are immediately over after you've seen this video. Shockingly and unembellished, we clear up with the romantic ideas about times long ago and confront you now with the bitter and sometimes even cruel reality of these people. Before we start with this enlightening journey into the Middle Ages, we would like to ask you for a contribution. Leave us a comment after this video and share your opinion with us. How do you like it? What do you think about the topic? And would you like to share? If you are our subscriber, we'll reward your post with a heart and pin it to the top where everyone will read it first. Here we go with one of the scariest errors in human history. 1. Stench and Hygiene the biggest problem in terms of cleanliness and hygiene in castles and palaces was the lack of running water. Some castles had wells, but they were often not inexhaustible and obtaining water was tedious. In winter, wells could be frozen for days and weeks even. Cleaning, cleanliness and hygiene were not considered very important in the Middle Ages anyways. Wastes often laid around on the ground or were simply dumped over the castle walls. It worked similarly with other human waste. Toilets were protrusions in walls and feces ended up around the fortress, where they stagnated. Later, simply wooden benches with a hole and buckets or vats underneath were common. Privacy was non-existent. Ordinary people did their business in the presence of others, while the more noble residents separated their toilets with a curtain. In the Middle Ages, washing, brushing one's teeth, and doing one's hair was hardly as important as they are today. There were bathtubs, but they were often used every few weeks or days, and because of the chronic water shortage, dozens of people often shared one bath. The people, as well as the castles, probably smelled in the Middle Ages in a way that would be very unpleasant to our noses today. 2. Narrowness 
Castles and palaces often seem huge, but they were once also stomping grounds for a large number of people. In castles, nobles often had spacious rooms, while servants lived in cramped quarters. In castles, space for everyone was often scarce. Servants shared rooms, people shared beds, or even slept on the floor. Due to the confinement, social tensions in the castle may have been extreme. 3. Dungeons and Prisons Notorious are, of course, also the dark dungeons under the castles and fortresses. Not only enemies were kept there, often members of the court or rebellious servants ended up here. If individual people fell out of line, became criminal or conspicuous, they were either expelled from the castle or imprisoned. Some people are said to have been forgotten, to have gone mad after long isolation or even tortured, or to have been nibbled by rats. Torture methods served at the time the chastisement, one assumed in the Middle Ages, namely that physical pain helped drive out the devil or immoralities from humans. 4. Rats and Vermin Castles were probably teeming with rats, and other vermin, such as cockroaches, ants, and beetles, were able to enter castles unhindered and make themselves comfortable. Inside the castle, some farm animals like chickens, goats, or even pigs were often kept partly free-running or in enclosures. The excrements of the chickens, but also of the rats, were lying around everywhere. A circumstance which was of course an invitation for further vermin, and so the vicious circle took its course. 5. Diseases We know today that rats were the great unknown factor in the outbreak of the plague. In the Middle Ages, this disease killed half the population of Europe. It was also considered by ignorance about hygiene, ways of spreading diseases and rats. But not only epidemics made life difficult for the people, also normal everyday ailments such as arthritis, colds, dental problems, inflammations, skin rashes, or venereal diseases. Since there were almost no doctors or medical professionals, people helped themselves with home remedies, bizarre tinctures, spells of questionable healers, or, if nothing else helped, also with prayers. These things often helped only moderately, the mortality rate was higher in the Middle Ages than at any other time. Blame for it were the already mentioned facts of the narrowness, the lack of hygiene, missing water, and often also malnutrition of humans and too much work. Which brings us to the next point. 6. Working until you drop People in the Middle Ages did not even dream of an 8-hour day and 6 weeks of vacation. A worker belonged to the lord of the castle or the nobleman of the region. As soon as young people were strong enough, they started to work, and this continued for a lifetime until they got sick or dropped dead. The working day usually began at sunrise and, depending on the task, ended late at night. Payment was, of course, none, the consideration for a lifelong service being a roof over one's head, shelter, and food. 7. Darkness and Cold Of course, people in the Middle Ages did not have electricity either. That is, they had no artificial lighting. Candles, oil lamps, fires, and torches were their only source of light after sunset. While these had their uses, they also had drawbacks. Often there was not enough light sources, they stank and filled rooms with smoke. The smoke could escape through the openings of the building, but at the same time the cold came in through these hatches and windows. Glass was also not yet available in the Middle Ages. If you wanted fresh air, you had to put up with sub-zero temperatures in winter. Heating was only available in the rooms of the highest nobility, and this consisted of an open fireplace. If no one added wood, or there was none left, it was bitterly cold in the castle. The servants usually slept close to the earth, in straw or on the floor. Anyone who has ever been in a castle knows that these buildings are drafty and icy cold to this day. The thick stone walls and dampness alone often make these buildings a very uninhabitable and ultimately unhealthy environment. 8. Fires Devastating fires broke out regularly in castles, palaces, and medieval settlements. The culprits were the many open fires. In addition, there was also the custom of covering floors with straw and rushes to cover the excrement of rats and domestic animals and to provide a little warmth. Simple buildings in settlements were built entirely out of wood and covered with thatch or straw. Once on fire, fires quickly spread to entire settlements, destroying homes within minutes to hours. 9. Poor Nutrition While knights, 
Princes, kings, and emperors often feasted decadently. For normal people, there was usually only the simplest food. Bread, water, maybe once in a while a few scraps of the noble reverie, an apple, and beer. In addition to the meager and often inadequate food, people also had a problem with drinking. Clean water was a rarity and often not available at all. Consequently, people drank beer and gladly in the morning. Alcohol in the morning also had the effect of being nourishing and to a certain extent invigorating. People also drank to suppress hunger and to better endure their hardship and suffering. So today, you can assume that in a medieval castle, almost all people were already drunk or at least woozy by noon. 10. Wars and Sieges Now you may think, who on earth did such a horrible life in the stinking and unhygienic castle, when there were also picturesque medieval villages with craftsmen and nice village communities? Here too, we must unfortunately immediately take away the illusion of the medieval market in the 21st century. In fact, the situation in the real Middle Ages was such that peasants, settlers, and craftsmen living outside fortified castles, palaces, or towns had a dangerous existence. Marauding gangs, vagrants, hostile principalities, the Huns, or one's own neighbors could break in, steal, rape, and murder at any time. The everyday life of people in this era was anything but tranquil and safe. Therefore, people often felt more comfortable behind thick walls and gladly and gratefully accepted poor living conditions, better than being exposed to constant dangers outside. Life as a servant in the castle was certainly no bed of roses, but often even easier than that of the peasants. Among the people themselves, there was also envy, distrust, and rivalry. You must also remember that the Middle Ages were the heyday of the Inquisition. The church exercised strict violence, and anyone who stood out, quickly ran the risk of ending up at the stake, or at least in the torture chamber. Social and religious fears, phobias, superstitions, defamation, and slander were the order of the day. 11. Social Constraints Oh, how beautiful was that movie in which the simple farmer's boy rose to knighthood through his courage and was then allowed to marry the noble princess. But we only know that from Hollywood, because reality in the Middle Ages was once again quite different. Those who were born poor usually remained so for the rest of their lives. Estates, which resembled the castles that still exist in India today, regulated social status, traffic rights, and of course, marriages. Even in the lowest estates, marriages were usually based on material and security considerations. After wars, there was usually a clear surplus of women in the population, Women who did not find a husband end up as lowly servants in brothels or simply left to their fate. Women were considered worthless in the Middle Ages and other eras because they could not be used as soldiers or hard workers. The only purpose of womanhood was often seen in the reproductive capacity, that is, to produce as many male offspring as possible, who could then work, rule, or fight again. This fate met not only simple country women, but also nobles. Even princesses, queens, and empresses often had hardly any rights, lived locked up and isolated in their castles and palaces, and had to deal with strict social conventions. Everyday life was regulated by court ceremonial. No one was allowed to speak openly or aloud. Lower people were not allowed to get too close to higher people or look them in the eye. People must have been incredibly tense and depressed. Certainly, quite a few people suffered from severe mental disorders in this age. Suicides and even natural deaths before reaching the age of 30 were not uncommon. Australia, the country down under, or the fifth continent, enchants us with magical nature, endless expanses, and unusual spots. The continent at the other end of the world still belongs to the wild and largely unexplored areas of this earth. In the endless outback, there are still dozens of tribes of aborigines who live in harmony with nature in the simplest way. Kangaroos and numerous other animals, which only exist in Australia. But Australia is much more than aborigines and kangaroos. This world is really strange and always good for a surprise. Today, we will show you 10 things found in this amazing world. But first, we would like to ask you for a little contribution. We are looking forward to your comments and opinions. This way we know who you are and what you think. It's important for us, 
and that's why we always reward especially our subscribers' comments with a heart now. We also pin the posts from our most loyal viewers to the top, where everyone reads them first. If you want to be in on this, all you have to do is make sure you already have a subscription, like the video, and mention both at the beginning of your comment. Here we go with the most exciting discoveries down under. 1. Longest Fence in the World The Chinese have the longest wall in the world, and the Australians have the longest fence in the world. However, the approximately 5,600 kilometer long fence through the outback was not built, as in China, to keep out human enemies, but to keep out dingoes. Dingoes are wild dogs that only occur in Australia. Until today, scientists argue about whether the Australian dingo is a species on its own, or whether these animals are feral domestic dogs, or a cross between domestic dogs and Australian wolves. It is clear that in the past, dingoes caused a lot of mischief. They tore the sheep of the settlers, attacked domestic animals, plundered supplies, and even babies and children have had harm come to them by dingoes. To protect the most important and densest settlement structures in Australia from the bold wild dogs, this gigantic fence was built. It separates the wild outback from civilization, and if you believe the Australians, the fence has fulfilled its purpose for many decades to the fullest satisfaction of the people. 2. Earth's Pavement Looking at these structures, it's hard to believe that they should be of natural origin. But this place, known as Earth's Pavement, or Tessellated Pavement, is really a natural geological feature. The rock is mainly siltstone, a type of rock that formed from deposited sediments about 300 million years ago in the Permian period. Due to the location below the water table, the sediments were compacted and consolidated. The roster structure came from local stresses on the ground. Why these stresses, and thus the cracks, are almost exactly square at this location, no one can say for sure. What is certain, however, is that such fascinating geometric structures can be found again and again in nature all over the world. 3. Horizontal Waterfalls From above, the horizontal falls in Talbot Bay in Western Australia's Kimberley region look out of this world. This unique natural phenomenon is not really waterfalls, but two tidal compensating currents. These flow from side bays of Talbot Bay depending on the tidal phase. When the tide rises, immense masses of water force their way through the two narrow straits at high speed. Because the outflow is delayed due to the narrowness, the two basins and the bay have widely varying water levels at tidal changes. The horizontal fall is the result of the equalizing current and forms one of the most massive and dangerous currents on this planet. Boats can navigate the narrows, but helmsmen must be perfectly familiar with the current conditions. 4. Castle in the Jungle The Spanish immigrant, José Paranella, reached North Queensland in 1913. A simple man, Paranella had set out to seek his fortune in Australia as a sugarcane picker. After 11 years of hard work, the man made it to the position of landowner. Enthusiastically, he sailed back to his Spanish homeland to finally marry his fiancée. However, she had shown no patience and had long since married someone else. Paranella did not let this get him down and married the younger sister of the woman. After his return to Australia, he continued to expand his sugarcane empire with great success. The Spaniard built a fairy tale house on a plot of land that is now largely in the jungle. Playful buildings, watercourses, parks, and decorative brickwork still stand today. Large parts of the former magnificent building are now overgrown by the jungle. In the parts that are still accessible, young couples marry or romantic festivities are held. 5. Gnome Town It is hard to believe but the garden gnome has also found countless friends in Australia. In Western Australia, the gnomes meet for a special parade. About two hours by car south of Perth, thousands of the gnomes cavort in a patch of forest. Gnome Town has a very special history because it all started in 1990 with just one garden gnome, which was parked here by its owner to protect nature. Since then, hundreds if not thousands of other people simply added their gnomes. For years, the whole site practically organized itself. Now, more and more visitors come every year, 
and Gnome Town has to be protected and organized by humans. However, at the moment there are still uncertainties about who actually owns the gnomes and what a tourist gnome town should look like in the future. 6. Shell Beach Shell Beach is an approximately 40 kilometer long stretch of coastline on Western Australia's Shark Bay that consists of a layer of snow white shells up to 10 meters thick. Strictly speaking, these are cockles of the species Fragum arugitum. Billions of shells lie around on this beach and with every step they rattle in a very special way. The mussels thrive particularly well on this stretch of sea because the water is extremely salty. The seawater here can be compared in places with the famous Dead Sea. Those who lie down in the water float almost effortlessly on the dense salty water. It is healthy for people and the mussels like it as well. The natural predators of the mussels on the other hand do not like the salt content of the water at all and so the mussels multiply here undisturbed and in particularly large numbers. 7. Marie Man At the sight of the Marie Man, you surely immediately think of the famous Nazca Lines and wonder what the Aborigines also created such a wonder of the world. But this thought is not quite right, because the monument, which became known as Marie Man, is not yet 30 years old. The 2.7-kilometer earth drawing was discovered on June 6, 1998 by a bush pilot named Track Smith. Shortly before, a mysterious fax had been received at a nearby hotel, pointing to the figure. Who created the earth drawing could never fully be determined. It was probably an artist, now deceased, who used modern GPS technology to draw the lines up to 30 centimeters deep into the earth. The Marie Man resembles the Greek representation of hunters or fighters. By the way, the Aborigines were not pleased about the artwork. They see in the strange man a destruction of their environment and a negative influence on their dream time. The work is located in an Aboriginal protection zone about 60 kilometers west of the settlement of Marie in central South Australia. 8. Alien Head If this skull was found in Australia, it would stand to reason that Alien was actually Australian and did not come from a distant planet. The skull is real even if only in parts. This bizarre thing is supposed to be a work of art. It was created long before the famous movies, probably in the 17th century. An unknown artist simply took a real skull and pasted the alien typical back of the head through a kind of paper mache to it. The creepy piece is now in the museum and is admired by thousands of visitors every year. 9. Wave Rock Here, we are not in Hawaii, and not at the water. This fantastic natural phenomenon is made of stone. Wave Rock, or Katakik, is a natural monument located about a four-hour drive inland from Perth. Wave Rock and the surrounding area are among the most beautiful landscapes on the continent, especially in the Australian spring where numerous wildflowers bloom and the grass is green. The unique rock formation was created over more than 2.7 billion years by wind and rainwater erosion. In total, the wave-shaped granite wall stretches over 110 meters and also features a cave and bays with ancient paintings of the indigenous people in its course. Wave Rock is still located on an aboriginal territory. The Noongar people used the rock as a sacred meeting place until today. By the way, aborigines see the wave-shaped granite wall as a legacy of the mystical Rainbow Serpent, which is commonly regarded as a benevolent protector of humans. Only occasionally does the mystical snake devour a human being, but only if he or she has not taken the sacred laws of the Aborigines very seriously. Not far from this natural spectacle, the curious and visitors to Australia will find a whole series of other great nature spots. Especially popular with vacationers is Lucky Bay, where kangaroos sometimes go for a swim. 10. Cooper's Dinosaurs of course, many millions of years ago, dinosaurs also lived on the Australian continent. Archaeologists have already excavated several very well-preserved dinosaur skeletons on the fifth continent. Nevertheless, archaeology on this continent is far from being exhausted as in other places of this world. Again and again, scientists find one or the other tidbit. Surprises or dinosaur species that were previously completely unknown. 
In 2006, for example, an almost completely preserved skeleton of a titanosaur was recovered. With a length of up to 30 meters and a height of at least 6 meters from the ground to the hip, the newly discovered species was probably the largest of its kind. Titanosaurs belong to the group of peace-loving and exclusively herbivorous sauropods. The skeleton was discovered at Cooper Farm in the Brisbane region, and the new species was appropriately named Cooper's Dinosaur. So, Australia is really much more than kangaroos and outback. This continent offers colorful variety and amazing surprises. Deep under the earth of Russia slumbered an artifact that could change forever our view of this world and the development of the human race. We must ask ourselves the urgent question, where technological artifacts millions of years old come from, and what scientists and authorities may be hiding from us. 1. 300 million years old wheel. This find shocked the world. A clearly technological artifact firmly fused to coal more than 300 million years old. The disc-shaped piece was found deep beneath the city of Donetsk in Russia's Rostov region. The sandstone mine, which dates back to the Carboniferous period, is about 300 to 360 million years old and the large deposit of coking coal inside the mine is just as old. A man named Kasabian discovered a strange artifact in the tunnels, approximately 0.62 miles below the Earth's surface, which, at first glance, resembles the ancient cap of a chariot. At second glance, the artifact looked to its binder like a strange yet oddly familiar shaft cover. Not far from where the first disc was found, Mr. Kasabian saw another, nearly identical object firmly fused to the coal in the surrounding area. Coal proven to be several million years old. By the way the discs are connected to the coal, it is evident these unique finds were deposited there at the time the coal was formed. Mr. Kasabian was said to have made a comprehensive, scientific analysis of the find. But then the unbelievable happened the disc disappeared. Either it was stolen or those responsible intentionally made the artifact disappear. Not only was Mr. Kasabian shocked that his valuable find just disappeared, but the people in charge of the mine flooded the shaft where the artifact was found just a few weeks later and now it is inaccessible forever. Finds like these provide us with alarming evidence that deep in the earth lie hidden relics of ancient lost civilizations by ancient in this context, we do not mean ancient times or ancient Egypt. We mean civilizations that may have inhabited this planet a hundred thousand years ago, or perhaps a million years ago. The fact that traces disappear in the course of time is shown to us today even by sites that are only 2,000 or 3,000 years old. Whole cities lie deep in the earth, and among many known archaeological sites, there have been even older relics of civilization that lived on this planet hundreds of thousands or several million years ago. 2. Antikythera Mechanism Scientists claim that complex calculating machines appeared only after the time of Christ. Moreover, gear technology, as well as clockworks, are considered to be an invention of modern times. That these technologies already existed far more than 2,000 years ago shows a mysterious mechanism which was found from a shipwreck before the Greek island Antikythera. In 1901, sponge divers stumbled upon the wreck and in the following months recovered a real treasure from the Ionian Sea. The mechanism initially attracted less interest next to all the riches of gold and the art treasures. The real astonishing thing about this find came out much later. The mechanism of Antikythera is something like the first analog computer and was probably used to perform astronomical and astrological calculations, as well as to predict astronomical cycles such as solar and lunar eclipses. Reconstructions reveal that the original mechanism consisted of at least 30 bronze wheels housed in a wooden box and connected by gears. The mechanism was operated by pressing a button and had complex visual displays of celestial bodies such as the sun, moon, and planets. Another gear was used to display arbitrary calendar dates. It was believed that the mechanism was even capable of predicting the time for the Olympic Games and other important events. 
In 2006, modern X-ray and computer technologies enabled new possibilities for investigation. And for the first time, it was possible to prove with certainty that the mechanism was indeed a highly complex device for calculating astronomical cycles. Even with this find, certain branches of science were reluctant for a long time to acknowledge the actual ingenuity and progressiveness of the find. The Antikythera mechanism proves irrefutably that long-ago civilizations and cultures had technologies whose invention we wrongly attribute to modern times. 3. Gobekli Tepe Gobekli Tepe hit the headlines as the Garden of Eden in Turkey. The age and complexity of the settlement were so amazing that researchers thought it must be the first city of mankind. But they were wrong again. Gobekli Tepe is undoubtedly a fascinating site, but never today can we call it the oldest city of mankind without knowing what relics and traces are hidden in the depths of the earth. The archaeological site near the city of Sunalafara in northeastern Turkey proves how wrong scientists can be. First, archaeologists uncovered a settlement whose beginnings dated back to the first centuries BC, and they rejoiced in their find. But then, German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt came along and realized that this settlement was not the real secret of the mountain. Schmidt claimed that there was an even much older settlement underneath and was thought to be crazy by his colleagues. Eventually, the archaeology rebel managed to find backers for his projects and convince the Turkish government. Schmidt was to be proven right, as he and his team uncovered a site dating back to the 10th and 8th millennia BC. This makes Gobleki Tepe far older than the Egyptian pyramids and even older than Stonehenge. The once ring-shaped site consists of several oval or round stone circles surrounded by T-shaped columns. The columns may have been devices to support a complex roof structure, or they may have been worshipped as stele. The T-beams are decorated with relief carvings of animal figures and people. Gobekli Tepe was probably the stone cult site of an unknown civilization, and people lived in wooden houses or huts around the central sanctuary. Until today, it could not be clarified who built the temples. The only certainty is that the construction of these columns required a degree of technical knowledge and craftsmanship. 4. Iron Findings Sites such as Gobekli Tepe and other megalithic structures are also fascinating due to the fact that, according to today's scientists, the builders did not possess advanced tools. Iron is a material that supposedly could not be made by humans until the 1st century BC. But in 1912, employees of the Municipal Electric Plant in Thomas, Oklahoma, found this iron pot in a lump of coal. The object was contained in a large lump of coal, and it came from a mine 312 million years old. At that time, coal was formed, and if the artifact was tightly enclosed in coal, it might have been on site during the formation process. In the end, this can only mean that at that time, there were living beings that populated the Earth and left this object in a place where coal was later formed. This find was examined by experts, and in the Creation Evidence Museum in Glen Rose in Texas, there is even the authenticated Certificate of Authenticity. The fact that the iron pot and the wheel from Russia are not unique pieces is also shown by this find. These objects, which resemble doorknobs and furniture fittings, are also about 300 million years old. 5. Ayer Binocle and Dwarka Scientists would like to see the evolution of human civilization on this planet become all too linear. At some point, apes are said to have risen from the trees, transformed themselves into upright walking homonyms by a miraculous evolutionary leap, and then an advanced society as we know it today developed more or less simultaneously all over the world. That this is not so is shown by serious differences in human technologization, social and economic progress, and the cultural blooms of individual epochs. Ayurbenikal is an ancient city in India built between 800 to 200 BC during the reign of the Vladara kings. The city consists largely of comparatively primitive and megalithic looking cottages and temples. At this time, architecture, art, and culture flourished in ancient Greece and Rome. Even in India itself, 
there were serious differences. The discovery of the legendary city of Dwarka in the ocean off the present-day state of Guajarati revealed that around 7500 BC, a metropolis existed in India that can be compared to ancient Rome or Byzantium in terms of construction and splendor. We remind you, the comparatively simple Gobekli Tepe was supposed to be the oldest city of mankind, but the findings of two worked pieces of wood in the ruins of Dwarka indicated an age of more than 9,000 years. 6. Gunung Padang Gunung Padang in Indonesia is an archaeological site whose top shows traces of human activity dating back several centuries or two to three millennia. In 2011, Indonesian scientist Dr. Danny Hillman Natawajaja recognized in the supposedly natural hill a man-made structure. Drilling revealed that several meters deep, evidence of human construction activity can be found dating back 9,000 and 20,000 years. The carbon dating of some premises found at depth even brought to light an age of 26,000. Scientists have been shocked ever since. Many simply refuse to acknowledge the results of the perfectly correct investigations. 7. Sulawesi Caves On the Indonesian island of Sulawesi, further evidence has been found in a group of limestone caves that humans had advanced intelligence and culture more than 40,000 years ago. The morals depict animals and scenes from daily life, telling scientists more about how people lived. In addition, archaeologists have found stone tools, bone needles, and shell jewelry in the Salawazi caves. Again, the evidence suggests that people in these eras had unusual motor skills and were not crude half-apes. Certainly, the artifacts from the Salawazi caves are not evidence of the existence of an early super race, but nevertheless, we cannot exclude the possibility that before or at the same time as these people lived, other civilizations that were technologized and produced artifacts, such as the Iron Wheel. If we look around the globe today, we find the extreme differences continue into the present. Primitive peoples live on Earth to this day, making simple shell jewelry, using fine bones for sewing, and cooking on open fires. While in other places on Earth, people operate smartphones and put steel cooking pots on induction plates. The findings all show that we desperately need more knowledge about our true past and about the diversity of cultures that very likely existed long before us. What do these facts tell you? Do you still believe in the stories taught in school? Or do you think it has long been proven that many intelligent and possibly even highly technical cultures lived on Earth before us? Your opinion counts, and as we look forward to each of your comments and your discussions on the topic. It remains for us to wish you a good time, and of course, we hope that you will join us again soon at Hidden Worlds.